Welcome to Condom Distribution as a Structural Intervention, Midwest Virtual Institute, brought to you by AIDS United as a part of the CVA Provider Network, supported by Cooperative Agreement Number PS19-1904 from the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. One of the key things about evaluation and monitoring is that documentation. And one thing I have to tell you is that sometimes, you know, at, uh, today I just have 40 minutes to really talk about monitoring and evaluation. And usually this can be a, a whole semester course. So we're just going to give you some highlights. And we're also going to see how it relates to our um to our condom distribution program, as well as we're gonna discuss how it relates and how it's maybe changed, and what evaluation in that documentation, the data collection methods, how that looks for our, um, during this pandemic that we're going through. So with that, I need your energy. I need those uh, fingers working in the chat box. I wanna ask you, why, you know, why would we evaluate and monitor? Why would we evaluate and monitor? Put that in in the chat. To see how we're doing, to identify best practices, to know if it worked or it didn't to know if we're actually reaching the people we're working with, to make sure we're using, uh, making the best of our resources. Funders require it, that's for sure. See what, if it works, I love it. Thank you so much, yes. Um, all those are great answers. And we know that we evaluate because, you know, just like Sue said, I think we wanna make sure to report to our funders. We wanna know that we're utilizing those funds in a responsible way and that it's working. So grant reporting, yes, Gary. Um, and I love uh, how to say that name that Jay Bing Ying say to adjust and meet the challenges to improve and grow. All those are awesome. Um, we wanna make sure that we, and making adjust, adjustments, great. So we know that if the plan was implemented in the way we, plan that it was going to work. If we did it the way we said it was going to work. Uh, we also want to see if it worked or if it didn't. Many of you said that. Uh, and to be aware of any challenges and barriers that, that are there for our target populations in our community. And obviously to create solutions. So to come up with innovative solutions to be able to reach that, that community. And also, Monica, you're right with making those adjustments. You know, one of... Um, Remember in our steps for evaluation, step four was uh, doing evaluation. And from there, we would move back to that implementation plan, making those revisions. And Doug, that's right, to know how many more condoms we need to order. We can evaluate, you know, did we, um, did we pass out the number of condoms we wanted to? And if we did it, we can find out why we did it. Or if we did, or we say, oh my gosh, we actually need to have more condoms. We need to order even more condoms. So, and that helps us plan for our next year. Evaluation can, can help in every phase. Uh, it can help with your budgeting. So it goes back to that condoms economic piece that Teresa talked about on the first day as well. I want to ask you now, and in the tech chat box, tell me some of the reasons we would want to evaluate during COVID-19. Why would we want to evaluate during COVID-19? Okay. Did it work? Yes. Did it continue to work even though we were going through a pandemic? What else? Any specific reasons? Maybe there's more sex now. Maybe people are, are, are having more sex due to maybe as a coping mechanism with, with the stress. Uh, we want to evaluate any of the adjustments we've made. Of course, the, the things shift. Devon says popular outreach locations may have shifted. Most definitely, you know, before it might have just been those, you know, we might be going to bars and that might have been in, in um, nightclubs, but then we might have shifted to other locations. Maybe now we're doing more outside outreach or street outreach, or maybe we're going to parks more. 
depending on your location, things might have changed. Um, and also we wanna see it to what extent did COVID impact our distribution? Um, I know when I called different organizations in the US, one of the things that, um, that was uh, mentioned was that they couldn't get distribution of internal condoms and how they, have to, they had to shift even in the making of their safer sex packages. And I see Lindsay saying, we wanna need to know how to make adjustments for the remainder of this pandemic. And hopefully, you know, we'll be ready for that post-pandemic era. One of the other the reasons that we want to uh, document is document history. We really want to, in COVID-19, you know, maybe in our history books, just like there's the pandemic of 1918, they might go back and say, hey, what happened during the 2021 COVID or 2020 and 2021 COVID-19 pandemic? You know, it's documenting that history. We want to see, as you guys mentioned, those issues, old issues versus new issues, uh, our budget, how it impacts it, our supply chain. Um, distribution might take longer delays, those mail orders, it might take longer to get condoms out to the community. And we want to make sure we, we, um, we you know, uh, document those new collaborations and innovative strategies. Just like I said with that strip joint, that they were able to to have condom uh, pass out condoms during this time, and how they paired up with uh, restaurants, they paired up with with um, passing out condoms as soon as you finish uh, going through the strip joint, that drive through strip joint. So documenting those new collaborations that that maybe we came up with, and again, always looking at those areas of improvement and those gaps. Okay, next slide, please. So this is just, I'm a visual learner, so I always like to see things. Uh, first click. Okay, so for your activities, we're looking at those activities that are done during our evaluation process. So we're developing those materials. Maybe we're having more virtual workshops and um, that distribution of uh, condoms. So these are the activities, the actual things that we are doing. And then we have the impact on our clients. The impact on our clients is the changing in behaviors. Um, when we're looking at activities, we're looking at that process. So that process evaluation, which is what, um, how did the process go? Did we implement those virtual workshops the way we planned them? Did we distribute condoms the way we plan them? That is called process evaluation. And when we look at the impact on our clients, that is called outcome monitoring. So outcome monitoring is that did we increase the knowledge of the people in our community? Did we change attitudes? Did we change that, that um, the behaviors? And all of this is called program evaluation. So we got process evaluation, the process of implementing our activities, the impact on our clients or that outcome monitoring, and all together, that is program evaluation. Okay, next slide. So we have an uh, evaluation framework for our condom distribution programs. We have in, uh, click, please. Okay, so we have implementation. From there, we go on to our results and outcomes. We get that we know that our ultimate goal is that we want to increase condom um we want to increase condom usage. We want to increase the, uh, and then lower the number of HIV and STIs in our community. Click. We know we do this by, we want to increase those three A's. Again, that is the core of this institute, increasing those three A's, knowing where we can make an impact by increasing the availability, accessibility, and acceptability. And that's called the outcome monitoring piece. We're in our implementation, making sure that we have all those components that we plan to do, that we're implementing correctly, that we're going to the number of places that we want to, um, that we wanted to go. If we said we were going to reach uh, 30 businesses in our network, that we did reach those 30 businesses, that we did the social marketing the way we wanted to. And that's called, again, the process. And then uh, at uh, pre-implementation, this is all that stuff that goes into that planning the pre or the before or the formative. So like you're forming something, you're forming that program. So this is all that stuff that goes on with 
reviewing your plan, creating the plan, developing that plan, and having all the trainings that might be needed in order for us to get our content distribution working. Next slide. So when we're looking at our condom uh, distribution evaluation, we, we really want to look at those outcomes. Obviously, that's what we want. We want to make sure we get some outcomes. So we want to make sure that we can apply these concepts into practice. And we do that by discussing our objectives, by having our activities, um, that we planned everything. So again, looking at that implementation plan and why that implementation plan is so important because then we can match up what we said we were going to do and then implement it and that would be our process of our activities and then we would look at that outcome monitoring if we have those impacts that's what we want to do so everything as you can see now that we've gone through the institute you know we're at the last module of the day if you see how it, it's all built up things do fall together, they're integrated together. Okay, next slide. So here I'm gonna ask you for that annotate. Remember, annotate is at the top of the screen where it says view more options. If you can't do that, just please put them into the, um, into the chat. And I wanna ask you, what information uh, do you currently collect and how? So let's start with that slide. I'll give you guys a few minutes to um, do that. Number of condoms uh, that were distributed, okay. And if you can't annotate, put it in the chat. How many number of unduplicated people? I see some of these say rice. Uh, so that demographic information. Thank you. Uh, great job. Reasonable time frame. And now let me ask you our zip codes, unduplicated people. Mm -hmm. Great. And now ask me, how did your data and your data collection methods change during the pandemic? Did they stay the same or did you change them? Doug says more telephone contacts. Some stayed the same. Okay, and some people did the telephone. Okay. So for some of you, something stayed the same. And we're going to look at how, you know, maybe there's some new things. Some some more people are saying more phone and email contacts, fewer um, outreach activities, part, being more reliant on partner agencies and reporting back. I know when I made those phone calls around uh, the U.S., a lot of people said that now um, different organizations, they were, they were, you know, like a health department, they were really um, – they put an emphasis on their partners, on those community-based organizations to collect that data. Because as we know, many health departments are working on COVID-19 efforts or case investigation, contact tracing, as well as now the vaccination, okay? And Michelle says that things didn't change as much. Thank you for participating in that. Okay, let's move on to the next slide. So our data collections, uh, during this time, there could be a change in metrics, um, you know, going through like social media, we might be using that more. Um, and it's important when we're doing like social media is that we have people that are looking at those metrics. I know Facebook has a metrics on like the number of engagements and activities. So looking at that data, um, look at your partners. Did we increase the number of mail orders? Um, the we, I know some sites, what they said, instead of sending out maybe 10 condoms like they used to in the past, they were sending 30 condoms at a time. That way, you know, they didn't have to keep sending and saving, you know, they could save on postage that way. Um, 
Some people did the drive-through event. So then they had to change their data collection to saying, well, how, ma how many drive-through events did we have? How many people did we reach? And then looking at those um, new partnerships and delivery methods. You know, we know that people um, have worked with different food pantries. Think about the lines of um, food pantries, the lines for food pantries in certain states have gotten to be four hours long in order for people to get food. So utilizing that space to also pass out those condoms if those, you know, that can be done with your organization is looking at those new partnerships, liquor stores, medical um, marijuana dispensaries, tattoo shops. All of these are new ways that might be new partnerships compared to what you used to do, as well as, you know, you might be looking at the number of virtual events you're hosting. Next slide. So our guiding questions are really, you know, we need to look at how did I increase as a program our availability? How did I increase our accessibility? How did I increase susceptibility? Again, that core of this institute. And your specific guiding questions are based on the community assessment. So our community assessment, remember painting a picture of our community, painting a picture of the barriers and gaps, knowing our resources, strengths, and assets. So our questions come up from our community assessment, but we want to be guided by the three A's of our institute, availability, accessibility, and acceptability. Click. Uh, yeah, thank you. Next slide. Okay, so now we're going to have an activity. We're going to move into our workbook. So if you have your workbook, and I know uh, Ben will put them up in the chat if you have the electronic version. We will be doing um, an activity that's going to take about 10 minutes. You're going to have a facilitator in the room to, to guide you through this activity. In this activity, you're going to be divided into three rooms, and you will be answering a couple questions. So we're going to be discussing some questions around availability, questions around accessibility, and also acceptability. And then you're going to answer um, how, you know, how did your... Um, how was the three A's, how were they changed during the pandemic? Okay, so from here, I want to see how did the activity go? Let me know if you feel comfortable, like you can unmute. Please do so. If not, um, make sure you put those in the chat. What are some things that maybe came up for, for the groups? Devin says, we, it went great. We had the best team leader. We had the best group. Anybody else? Any, any interesting things that came out of the group? How about if I just ask you for some reactions? Send me some love, some claps, some thumbs up if you had a great, uh, some great participation. Oh, somebody says I found a friend. I see some claps. Okay. So let's go ahead and keep moving. Thank you, Sheila, Rachel, Annie, Nancy. I see you. Thank you. So the next slide, we're talking about logic models. Logic models, sometimes when, when we're um, working on our implementation plan or when we're looking at funding, we're going to be asked to have a logic model. So this is very important. I know, just like I said with uh, evaluation, sometimes people are like, ooh, evaluation, ooh, you know, logic models. But in reality, we work on logic models all the time in our in, in our daily activities, when we plan things, even our daily lives. So during this section, we're going to talk a little bit about logic models and how you would come up with a logic model for our condom distribution uh, program. Okay, next slide. Okay, so here you can see, um, and I'm sorry, uh, can you go back, Walter, please? So here you can see this. Um, you know, thinking about what is the logic model. When we think about the mechanics or the formula of creating the a logic model, we think about the following. We think if B happens, then A happens. So for example, if I want to eat a cookie, then that's our A, 
that I, I would have had to buy a cookie. So we would have had to have bought a cookie. Um, did you notice that first what I asked about was what we were trying to achieve? My achievement was eating that cookie. I wanted that cookie. So uh, we need to make sure we know where we're going to know what activities we need to be putting in. So there are different ways of developing logic models, but we're just gonna focus on like a linear way of uh, doing a logic model. And like I said before, we have logic models in our daily lives. So I'm gonna ask you for some help. Next slide. We're looking into having a birthday cake. Who doesn't like birthday cakes and who, who does not like, you know, birthdays or birthday cakes? I love, uh, You'll see my, my favorite kind of cake in this logic model. So the problem we have is there's no birthday cake for our birthday party. The goal of this uh, activity or our, is that our friends and families are going to have fun at this party, but they are looking forward to next year's birthday and specifically next year's birthday cake. So our long-term outcome. So we start with where we want to go. Some of the components of our logic model are inputs, activities, outputs our short and medium term outcomes and then we have our long term outcomes so our long term outcome would look that we have those friends our family like part of that goal that they're wanting to come to next year's birthday party and specifically they want to eat that red velvet cake with cream cheese uh frosting our short term outcomes would be that friends and family are happy and are grateful to have eaten such a delicious red velvet cake. Uh, and friends and family eat the cake and some people even get seconds. So they liked it so much they needed some more. Our outputs. So our outputs is really what we produce. Or um, So we produce a birthday cake. We produce that red velvet cake. And then we have the activities. I'm gonna ask you before we show, before we show those activities, take them up, take them up. I think we everybody see them. Um, what are some of the activities that we're going to be doing? Would be we would need to go grocery shopping. We would need to bake the cake. We would need to decorate that cake. But for our inputs, they're the things that are needed, um, the resource, the assets. So the resources, resources, and um, resources and assets that we would need for this birthday cake would be money. We would need a recipe because if somebody told me make a, a red velvet cake, I wouldn't, unless it was like a, a, you know, the red velvet cakes in a box, I would not know where to go with it. So I would need a recipe. Uh, uh, this would be like your plan. Um, I would need time to do this. I would need a person that would know how to bake and that could actually bake that cake. And then we would also need an oven or a kitchen in order to bake the cake, okay? So this is how you could plan out having this uh, birthday cake. When we're looking at our logic model or when we're looking at our condom distribution program, we look at our three A's. We wanna increase our three A's. And the way to do that is um, we wanna increase our condom use as well. We wanna, and then we wanna lower HIV transmission. Also, we can lower those SDI uh, transmissions in our community. So we want to look at how do we increase our three A's. Click. Next. Okay. How do we increase availability? The way we increase the availability would be by having appropriate supplies, by having those venues, by having our collaborators, by having our memorandums of understanding and um, agreements, and by having a distribution schedule. Because it's not good that we just, you know, that we just say, hey, you're gonna go into a venue and you're gonna find condoms there, but then we never distribute those condoms. So we wanna make sure we have a, a schedule. We wanna increase our accessibility by um, having the placement, by providing trainings, and then we also wanna increase acceptability. And the way we do that is by increasing our uh, the attractiveness of our product, by increasing positive norms of condoms around our community, by social marketing, and by uh, getting those gatekeepers uh, with us, people that, that the community trusts. Okay, next slide. So here's a logic model for our condom distribution, which would be uh, our long-term outcomes, which would be increasing our um, 
increasing our three A's, increasing the kind of use around, uh, around people who are HIV positive or um, are at high risk. We have our short and medium outcomes. We also have our outputs, uh, the number of, of services we provided, the number of, of collaborators. Then we have all those activities that are in our plan, all the things that we said we were going to do. And then we have our inputs. And as you can notice at the bottom uh, left, that PPE might be a new input that we might need to include now with COVID time. Next. Um, this is a practical approach. Uh, so a logic model is really a practical approach of how we can apply our evaluation to our, our program, how we can have those smart objectives, and that we inform um, our, our project is really informed by that data. It's really improved it to see that we do what we went out to do, did, were there any changes in our community, and then how can we apply those changes? How can we apply that to our revisions? Next slide. Okay, here's just an example, again, of our some of our objectives. Next slide. We want to inform our pro, you know, again, the reasons where we're going to be doing, we want to come up with a report, um, the activities, changes. Next slide. We want to have a practical approach to documenting our data. We want to take into account the changes that happen, especially through COVID-19. We want to make sure that we see where are the, the months that we might have that people pick up condoms more, or are there venues that people are picking up condoms more at? Uh, next slide, which talks about variables, measures, and action. Uh, this really outlines the recommended steps to identify the different variables um, that you would have for your objectives and activities. And we will have um, a lot of these resources. They will be on a link in uh, the registration link that we have on Swagu. I think that's how you say it. Um, so if you need more information on evaluation, it will all be there for you. Um, next slide is just a sample. Uh, your evaluation plan might look like this, where you have the goal, it then includes your smart objectives, it, you know, and then we talk about our variable, the what, what are we doing, and then the measure, how much, how are we changing that. And slide 24 continues on some of those things that we might need, such as the instrument, or what are we using to collect the data, who's responsible for that data, as well as uh, who's responsible, like, and, and what kind of analysis we're going to be doing, and then keeping that in that report. So where does that meet? Uh, does it meet the objective or not? Okay, next slide. We have some um, data collection sample tools. Again, this is from, uh, the source was from our Missouri Department of Health, and this was just one of their tools that they utilize. Uh, Walter, the next slide, please. So the next slide will show that sample data collection tool, and um, you can find that in our uh, in the link. So all these resources, you'll be able to to download them if you want, copy them, make them your own, change them up. But this is just a sample of how you could collect data for um, that collection of every month. Okay. Um, from there, uh, I want to share with you some of the uh, again um, how you can. Format your plan by having uh, your activity, then the time frame, the measure, what's the data you're measuring, and then the person that's responsible. When you're working on your plan, your specific plan at your organization, you want to make sure that you, you really hone in on who's that person responsible for collecting that data. That might be one person, but the person that analyzes the data could be somebody else. Okay. Next slide. Uh, to formalize our evaluation plan, there's two options. One would be an integrated plan. So it's integrated in your plan. So you have your implementation plan. And in that, you have a section for evaluation. Or it could be a standalone plan, like a um, just a different document. As our CDSI, as, as this Condom Distribution Institute, we really recommend having an integrated plan. The reason we say this is that it makes things flow a little bit easier. It makes sure that it's in one document. It makes sure that uh, it ensures like that continuity. So if somebody drops off and you know 
let's say Marilyn, I don't no longer work at the health department and I'm not going to be doing condom distribution anymore. Whoever comes in and replaces me can pick up that plan and can see what the evaluation is and who is responsible for, for some of the work that needs to be done during that evaluation. Next slide. However, if you do plan, it's not as recommended, but if you do plan to have a separate evaluation plan, you gotta make sure you have an introduction, a program description, the purpose of the evaluation plan, methods, details. And if you remember, if you were here with us yesterday, we did discuss that introduction. We discussed that um, program description. You got a chance to write that out in your um, in one of the activities. Okay, and then um, next slide, some of the recommendations for evaluation during COVID-19. Um, having patience, I tell people, Roll with resistance. You know, as we change, we must all be, you know, resilient and patient to pivot as needed. Some of our best laid plans from before, from 2019, definitely changed in 2020. So making sure to make those, um, making sure to make those revisions, having the time spent, um, time, you might need extra time to do the work that needs to be done, having surveys and polling, it might be easier to do surveys and polls um, versus like having one-on-one -on -one interactions, especially because of COVID safety. Digital literacy, I know a lot of you mentioned this earlier. It is so important. How can we avoid that by having hotspots, by providing um, surveys that are both mobile friendly and also tablet friendly? Uh, not everybody has a computer and not everybody has reliable internet. And then looking at our, our instruments, like I said, mobile and tablet friendly, and then having in some awareness of that data analysis, because we can see those trends. How did this pandemic change our program and looking at that trend over time? And last but not least, um, on that next slide is when you're developing your draft of your plan. I know we went through all this information very fast. You can ask for technical assistance. There's agencies that will help you look at your evaluation plan. We're gonna have all those resources up on the link, so you will be uploading those shortly, and you'll be able to download those, look at them. But if you do need help, you know, uh, Carson, as, as he closes out, he's gonna tell you how you can request and receive technical assistance around evaluation or any other topic for our condom distribution program. So last, as a quick summary, Evaluation is truly a vital step. Documentation, if you don't document it, it did not happen. So make sure you document so that we are accountable not only to our funders, but we're accountable to our community because we want to make sure our community knows that the data they gave us, we were able to make it work and make it work for a condom distribution program that we didn't just utilize the data and not do anything with it, but document it so we can make sure it happened. Okay, we wanna make sure we address those three A's, acceptability, accessibility, and also that availability. Thank you so much. Uh, if you have questions, please post them in the chat. I see Michelle says, do you agree that new volunteers would be good for this? Um, I'm not sure if that had to do with if they would be good for uh, writing your evaluation plan. Um, but you can utilize volunteers in certain areas, such as um, maybe gathering information. They have the pulse of the community, so they might be able to help you with um, doing some quick surveys, some quick polls. But um, evaluation really takes time. So we do we want to put all of evaluation on uh, volunteers. Um, we really want to look at people that have taken, um, you know, data collection, volunteers would be applicable, but maybe for that analysis, you would really have to look at your internal organization for that. 